Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So some of you I know have been watching my etiquette reaction series to Blink Empire, which if you haven't yet been watching, watch it now. And there have been little bits of feng shui tips in there and you guys have been giving me really good feedback and comments that you want more on feng shui, which is this amazing, I mean it's a 2000 year history, traditional Chinese kind of thing that I think we in China should really promote more. So in order for you guys to live the best life you can possibly live, whether in your workplace or in your home, I'm gonna give you feng shui by room. And in addition, a little house tour of my feng shui house. All right, here we go. So you've probably seen that a lot of Chinese love to have gold and marble and shiny stuff. And it is kind of true. I mean, you do want these elements, just like in the West, right? How Versailles has a lot of gold and marble and other stuff. But you do want some elevated, beautiful, ornate finishings that will help elevate your house and therefore elevate your chi. So you can see over here, I have this beautiful mirror that I bought on auction at Tuo, which is this antique auction house in Paris. I mean, technically speaking, in terms of antiques, you want to be really careful feng shui wise because this mirror is like almost 100 years old. So, you know, my uncles who really also believe in feng shui, they said, oh, be careful, you need to clean it. Otherwise it will have the spirit and energy and chi of the previous owners. And if the previous owners were like happy and had a good life, then they're giving good chi to you. But if let's say that previous owner went bankrupt or you know there was some tragedy that happened, that's bringing a lot of yin energy into your house and you don't want that. When I bought it, I just hung it up. And when my uncles were saying, oh, careful, Sarah, if you look into the mirror, you might see a different reflection. I freaked out and immediately called my feng shui master and said, clean my antiques. So in addition to this antique, I also have over here, this really charming chair and you can see i mean this is actually i had this reupholstered so you know a pop of bright colors not only just helps your mood but also you know i mean for me red purple are good colors for me because they're warm colors and you really kind of need to know your your ba zi ba means eight zi means characters so this includes your so there are eight chinese characters that show your date of birth so your year month date of birth and your time of birth and from there you can calculate all these things whether you should be having more metal or more wood or more water and what colors in your house. Oh yes, let's take a look over here at my living room table, which is by Poltrona Frau. And you will see over here that actually in Chinese feng shui, we do not like to have sharp corners. So as much as possible, we try to have these rounded, smooth corners. And this really is like, I mean, Asians love this kind of stuff. So this creates for good harmony in my house. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the artwork in my house. Over here, I used to have hanging here a big artwork that had all these, it was like all these magazine covers and each magazine cover had different people. So it almost had like 60, 70 little people over here, which when my feng shui master came into my house said, ooh, this needs to go because jiao xiao ren. Jiao xiao ren means little people, which really just means like people that are bad for you, like, you know, not good energy people. And having a big artwork with lots of different people in it will attract a lot of little people's energy into your home that you definitely do not want. So immediately I swapped it out and you can see over here, I mean, this is actually a beautiful piece by a Chinese female artist called Tui Jie that I collected a few years ago. Me and my Russian bestie actually bought like two works from, you know, the same series. And this is actually Guozi Fan Dian in Beijing. So it's like Beijing International Hotel or something. And it's a really old, it's been around for decades and it's an icon in Beijing. And she actually studied architecture. So you'll see really architectural elements. And what my feng shui master said about this, because I sent over a couple options of her works, my feng shui master said, this is good because it's like three women holding hands. So it's about female empowerment, harmony, women helping women. It's good that the women also, the people are more abstract. So, you know, it's they're not too real and human-like, which, you know, will bring other energy into your house. Oh, so this is really fun. A lot of my friends, you know, some people, my Chinese friends that know feng shui, they're like, oh, that's a chen fu shiba. Some of my friends that don't no feng shui, I think this is like a work of art, but actually this is full on feng shui. And so what you do, my dad, when he came to visit me, because you know, my house is in the French concession, it's obviously an old house. A lot of history has happened in the in Shanghai over the years. And so obviously, you know, lots of people lived here that don't live here anymore or don't exist, don't live anymore. And therefore their spirits are kind of, you know, hanging out. And my dad said, I brought you this chen fu that you can use whenever you feel that there are spirits around. And what you should do is you should do this. 
This is actually made of horsetail hair and basically as soon as I feel like, oh, there's some kind of weird energy in the house, I should do this. <laughs> it gets rid of any kind of ghosts, right? So we talk about yin and yang, right? You've seen that little circle of yin and yang. Yang is the male, yang is the sun. Yin is the female, yin is the moon. So, you know, human energy is the yang and ghosts are the yin. How many times have I used this? This is probably the first time I used it this year, just to show you guys on screen. <laughs> but I just hang it up here. That's a good luck charm. And my dad carries one, all of our cars he puts one, he puts one in, in his office, in different rooms. Sometimes he even carries it around. Yeah, that's my dad for you. Especially if he goes to hospitals and if he goes to temples, because those are traditionally the places with the most yin energy. And he literally, he has different chen fus that he carries around with. Okay, so over here, you can see I have these little side tables. They are also round, so nice and smooth and round. And then up here, we have this hanging light. So this works in my house because I have high ceilings and actually I feel like this part of Chinese feng shui also kind of matches with western home decor but you know you want high ceilings and really if you have a low ceiling you don't want to be hanging anything because that just creates pressure on you it doesn't feel good it's you know in Chinese we call yai yi, right so because I have a high ceiling it's okay to hang this hanging thing and actually it's very light so for example you never want something hanging and we'll see when we go to the bedroom you don't want anything hanging over your body when you're sleeping or if you're sitting down really because, because it creates pressure, it may cause joint pain or, or illnesses on your body. So this is okay because it's a high ceiling and you know, it's very light, but uh, this is here. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you three simple tips for each room and make sure you're writing them down. Living room, declutter, air it out. Open the windows, open the balcony, at least nine minutes a day. Nine is a very auspicious number in Chinese feng shui. And thirdly, add green plants. Living green plants are the easiest way to bring new living energy and chi into your living room. And what to do if a plant dies? Get rid of it immediately. Dead plants, dried plants, a huge no-no. They suck up your energy, they weaken your energy. And if you replace it and that plant dies again, replace it again. Keep replacing it until the plant no longer dies because when the plant dies, it's actually helping you get rid of negative energy. It's taking one for the team. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.